I love you, Macrochip. Macrochip was a video that I was that I think today I'm still pretty proud of. I spent about four or five days working on it. I did a uh, complete video and audio remaster of it because I was so happy with it and I wanted to make sure it was the best it could be. The, the video is so well tuned to the soundtrack, which is also great. I mean, it comes out on your subwoofer so well. I love that. Just the, so the low, I love, I love low tones, just deep, rich sound. I love that. If I get a piano, I want one of those with like an extra octave or tuned one octave lower because I love that deep stuff. I love it deep. Yeah, I color adjusted every single scene in it. I adjusted the col I, the the histogram. Of, it was perfect. More importantly, YouTube wouldn't let me upload the video. They blocked anybody from ever seeing it because I have like a minute and a half of a song which somewhere along the line is owned by Warner Music Group. So they said, sorry, we can't show this video. And they even said so before it aired. They're that good now, which is annoying. But I don't care because, because, because I created the cast site.com. The cast site was .com was created in an effort to preserve the purity of the videos. In that, if YouTube deems something unacceptable, or if people around me deem something unacceptable, that doesn't have to affect me because this project is above what YouTube thinks is acceptable. The cast site.com slash band.html. You can watch every video that YouTube so far has banned, blocked, erased, or silenced. conclusion was that the more men ejaculate between the ages of 20 and 50, the less likely they are to develop prostate cancer. The best fit line for the northern hemisphere being the green line, while for the southern hemisphere being the blue line. Check out Microchip. I love it. You can also download a high, high quality copy, uh, up to 508 megabytes in QuickTime Movie. That's the uh, master export encoded version that I have will, that will be saved for a long time. I found a PDF. It was from it was a paper presented to an anthropological an, an ethnography ethnography conference called Epic 2007 and it was sponsored by the American Anthropological Association. The cool thing about it is that it was a paper that cited me. It talked about me. It it had about a page in it about me. That was kind of cool. I mean, you don't, not every day you open up the newspaper and there's an article about you sitting there and just like analyzing you and stuff. So check it out. It's at my site. Uh, I've got an entry. I've got something I've written about it on my homepage, thecastsite.com. And I highly recommend check that out if you follow the cast. It's pretty cool and you can read what they said about me if you want. It's at it's, uh, slash narcissism.pdf because that's what the paper's on. The, the September 11th video I did, I was pretty happy with. It starts off talking about the myth, the, the greatest myth of September 11th, I think. The idea that the terrorists attacked us because they hated our freedom. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's your best reason? What disappoints me? maybe even disappoints, I think that's the right word, in how humans act in the media, is that the Osama bin Laden puts out audio and videotapes. We see them on TV and you'd think they'd be translated for us. You'd think we'd want to know what the guy who is trying to destroy, who's the leader of the most dangerous terrorist group to America, would be actually saying. He continually brings up the same four points. That was the issue in 1996, 1998, and every audio tape since. One-sided funding of Israel. 
the Amer Americans supporting a posse dictatorships in the Middle East. Third was the brutal Iraqi sanctions killing millions of Iraqis and mostly children. And the fourth, uh, I don't know, just generally playing games with them. Uh, what they would do is, like during the Iraq, Ar the Iraq Iran War, they'd fund both sides with weapons, just so, in a hope that they'd just kill each other off. They'd take out and put in new leaders wherever they felt like it, and they just messed with these people's countries and their politics and their lives. That pisses them off. Our anti-isolationist policy of being entangled in every single country and every single politics to make sure everybody acts very stably, everybody is stable. Stability doesn't mean happiness. Stability only means lack of change. And stability means preservation of current institutions, which is not necessarily good. I mean, that's why did... It, we wouldn't be here if Britain kept our colony stable. We got, we got like 761 military bases in about 120-something countries. That's a lot. That's a, just about every country in the world. If we wanted to truly cut spending, not have to increase taxes, uh, decrease the size of the government, make our foreign policy much friendlier to different countries while also not appearing to be submissive to them, all we do is we draw back our men. The World War II is over, but we've still got our largest military bases in Germany and in Japan. Why do we need those? Feel free to send me a message or an email at mac.cast at gmail.com. This is the blog and form and the website. Gosh darn it, it's kind of cool. I, I like doing that thing.